Tom Harrison, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Northern Virginia. Today, I'm going to show you how to follow AWS best practices to secure the data stored in your Amazon Simple Storage Service buckets. Let's get started. First, let's discuss about how to restrict access to your S3 resources. After that, we'll discuss about monitoring your S3 resources and how to use encryption to protect your data. By default, all Amazon S3 buckets are private and can only be accessed by the AWS account that created them. As the owner of the account, you can grant permissions to your S3 buckets and objects to users in your AWS account and other AWS accounts, AWS services, or to anyone with an internet connection. S3 allows you to control access to your objects by using IAM user policies, which are permissions policies attached to a user, S3 bucket policies, which are permissions policies associated to resources, including buckets and objects, and access control lists, or ACLs. A good strategy to securing Amazon S3 always starts with implementing the concept of least privilege access. Least privilege access means granting only the minimum necessary permissions to perform the needed task. For example, if a user should have access to download objects from your bucket, but not have permissions to delete objects from your bucket, then make sure not to grant the delete permission. To help make sure that you're granting the least privilege possible, start with a minimum set of permissions and grant additional permissions only as necessary. By using S3 bucket policies and IAM user policies, you can use conditions to limit access to your bucket based on things such as an allowed range of IP addresses that a request must originate from, or to enforce that all requests to the bucket use multi-factor authentication, or MFA. Some use cases, such as hosting a static website on S3, require public access so that anyone with an internet connection can access your objects. If your use case requires that you never allow public access, it's a best practice to enable the block public access settings for your bucket. Let's take a closer look at how to restrict public access to your S3 buckets by using S3's block public access settings. After logging in to the AWS Management Console, navigate to the S3 Console. Then choose the name of the Amazon S3 bucket that you want to secure. On the next page, choose the Permissions tab for your S3 bucket. In the section titled Block Public Access, choose Edit to modify your bucket's block public access settings. Here you see there are four settings. Two of the settings allow you to block users from adding any new bucket policies or ACLs that grant public access. If these settings are enabled and a user attempts to add new public permissions to your bucket or objects, they will be faced with an error and the permissions will continue to be private. The other two settings allows you to block public access from already existing S3 bucket policies or ACLs. When you enable these settings, S3 ignores all ACLs that grant public access and ignores any public access or cross account access as a result of an existing public bucket policy or access point policy. Take a moment here to pause the video to read the description of each setting. If your use case should never allow public access, it's a best practice to choose to block all public access by enabling each of the settings. Select the checkbox next to block all public access. Next, choose save changes. To confirm the changes, enter the word confirm in the text box and then choose confirm. Now that we've enabled all the block public access settings, we can be sure that the bucket is not publicly accessible. We just looked at how to enable these settings for an individual bucket, but S3 also allows you to configure these settings at the account level. If you know for sure that the AWS account deals with sensitive data, or you don't have any use cases for public S3 objects, then it's a best practice to also turn on all the block public access settings at the account level. To enable the settings at the account level, choose the block public access settings for this account on the left side of the S3 console. Here, you see the same four settings that we just enabled on a single bucket. The difference is that the account level settings apply to all current and future S3 buckets in your AWS account. Before enabling these settings, make sure that you don't have any S3 buckets in your account that have a use case that requires public access. 
In general, think of the S3 block public access settings as an additional safeguard to prevent you from accidentally granting public access to your S3 objects and as a quick way to disable any already existing public permissions. The settings on their own don't make a bucket public or private, and if they are turned off, then any buckets that were public before will become public again. Next, let's discuss a few best practices for detecting, monitoring, and auditing usage of your Amazon S3 resources. S3 provides several ways to enable logging for monitoring and auditing of any actions that occur in your account. These are important because they help you gain visibility into the actions in your account. By default, CloudTrail tracks bucket level actions such as the modification of S3 bucket policies or other configuration changes. To track object level actions such as get object, you can enable S3 data events. It's also a best practice to enable S3 server access logging. These logs provide detailed records for the requests that are made to a bucket. For example, which user and from which IP address deleted an S3 object. Server access logs and CloudTrail logs can be very useful in security and access audits. AWS also offers several services that can help you protect and automatically remediate any potential unintended changes or access in your account. AWS Config continuously monitors your account for configuration changes. You can tell AWS Config about your desired configurations and it can automatically take actions to make sure that your S3 buckets are in the desired state. For example, AWS Config can make sure that encryption is enabled on your bucket or that the block public access settings are enabled. Amazon Macy is a fully managed AWS service that uses machine learning and pattern matching to automate the discovery of sensitive data, such as personally identifiable information and financial data. Macy can identify and report overly permissive S3 buckets and create detailed findings for you to review and remediate. Amazon Guard Duty is another fully managed intelligent threat detection service that you can enable to continuously monitor your AWS accounts and workloads for malicious activity. By default, when you start using the service with a new account, S3 data events monitoring is enabled. Access Analyzer for S3 allows you to easily review the current permissions for your S3 buckets. Let's take a look at how to review a bucket in your account using the Access Analyzer. You can access the Access Analyzer from the menu button in the top left corner of the S3 console. Next, choose Access Analyzer for S3. In the top right corner of the Access Analyzer, you can select the region. If you haven't used Access Analyzer before in this AWS region, you are prompted to enable it. To enable Access Analyzer, choose the link to visit IAM Access Analyzer in the informational box. After choosing the link, the IAM console opens. Choose the Create Analyzer button to create one. You can create an analyzer for your AWS account, or if you are using AWS organizations, you can create one for the organization. Select your AWS account and choose Create Analyzer. After a few minutes, the analyzer is created. You'll see a green bar at the top of the page that says Analyzer Creation is Complete. Let's return to the S3 console by entering S3 into the search bar. Next, select the Access Analyzer for S3 in the menu on the left side. To see more details about the findings, select one of the buckets and then choose the View Findings button. This opens the IAM console, which provides details on the permissions that are currently allowed to another AWS account or to the public. If the access isn't intentional, you can modify the permissions in the S3 console. If the access is intended because of your use case, then you can archive the findings so you can focus on the other findings with potential security risks. Next, let's discuss how we can use encryption to secure our S3 objects. If your use case requires encryption, note that Amazon S3 supports the HTTPS protocol, which encrypts data in transit to and from Amazon S3. All AWS SDKs and AWS tools, including the AWS CLI, and the AWS Management Console use HTTPS by default. If your use case requires encryption for data at rest, note that Amazon S3 offers server-side encryption. The SSE options include SSE S3, SSE KMS, or SSE C. 
you can specify the type of server-side encryption to use when you write objects to the bucket. If you don't want to change the way that you write to the bucket, or you want to make sure that all new objects written to your bucket are encrypted at rest, even if no encryption type is specified while writing the object, then you can enable default encryption on your bucket. You can also create S3 bucket policies using conditions that enforce encryption in transit or at rest for all requests to your Amazon S3 buckets. Let's go back to the S3 console and enable default encryption on one of our S3 buckets. Here we are back at the list of S3 buckets in our account. Choose the name of one of the S3 buckets in your account to enable default encryption. Next, select the properties tab to find the default encryption settings for the bucket. Scroll down until you see the default encryption section of the page. If default encryption isn't already enabled, you'll see that default encryption is disabled. Choose edit to modify the default encryption settings for your bucket. To enable them, select Enable. Now we're presented with two encryption type options. If you choose SSE S3, then Amazon S3 manages your encryption keys. Each object is encrypted using the AES-256 block cipher and a unique encryption key. If you choose SSE KMS, then the encryption keys are managed by the AWS Key Management Service. When you use keys that are managed by AWS KMS, you can audit the usage of your encryption keys and create your own keys that give you the ability to create key policies for more fine-grained control over the access to your encryption keys. After selecting the SSE KMS option, you can choose to use the AWS Managed KMS key for S3 or choose a customer managed KMS key that you have already created. If you choose the AWS managed KMS key, you don't have the ability to manage the key policy or allow other AWS accounts to use the encryption key. This means that cross account access to S3 objects isn't supported when you use this key type. If you select the option to choose from your AWS KMS keys, then you are presented with a drop down list of the existing KMS keys in the same region as the S3 bucket. Or you can enter the ARN of an existing KMS key manually. The last option is a feature called Bucket Key, which can reduce your encryption costs by decreasing the calls to the AWS KMS service. When you use SSE KMS, there are additional KMS permissions required for your IAM users for them to be able to read and write to your S3 bucket. Make sure to update your user policies before modifying your default encryption to SSE KMS. Also, if you are using the S3 bucket to store log data from another AWS service, then make sure to check the documentation for that service to confirm if it supports SSE KMS encryption. For this demo, let's choose server-side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys or SSE S3 because this option is good if you are just getting started with S3 encryption and don't require any changes to your user's permissions. Select the button for SSE S3. And to save the changes, choose Save Changes. If your default encryption settings were enabled successfully, you can scroll down to review them. After making this change, all new objects that are written to your S3 bucket without specifying an encryption type during the upload will be encrypted at rest with the encryption type that you selected. So now you know several best practices for securing access to the objects in your S3 buckets. We discussed restricting access by using policies with least privilege access and by using the block public access settings. Then, we looked at a few ways to monitor the S3 resources and the activity in your account. And finally, we explored different ways to secure your data with encryption. If you want to learn more, check out the resources in the description below. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.